Thank you for listening to the Gateway to the Rockies podcast from Visit Aurora from the rafters of the Stanley Marketplace. This is the show dedicated to telling the stories of Aurora, Colorado. Hi there. My name is Dave. I'm the senior marketing manager for Visit Aurora, and I have a co-host today, uh, Malik, who's a part of our marketing team. How are you doing, Malik? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Good. There's a reason why you're here. You actually brought our guest today. Uh, For those who don't know, which I don't think anybody listening would know, but Malik is an avid soccer player slash coach football runs through your veins you think about it while we're in meetings our guest today is from the colorado rapids veteran midfielder colin warner colin thank you for joining us today man yeah yeah when malik uh, reached out i was like no problem you know we met on the football pitch he's a certified baller so <laughs> okay so he gets the co-sign from a pro because we hear lots of stories of malik's ability but when you see it firsthand in a pickup setting you can see the skills translate yeah that's how it is i mean pickup is kind of you know, it's not really structured, so you get to see like exactly what a player is about when they come out there. And there was a the day we met, there were some really good players out there, and Malik definitely stood out. He's a quality player. As a pro, I have to ask you: when you're playing pickup, you obviously have a reputation to uphold, but I imagine you're not going hundred percent. Do guys like try to challenge you when they realize that you're in the MLS? Um, a bit. I feel like in general with the group that we that we have out there, it's like. These guys like to be creative and okay. they like to show off their skills. So it's kind of more about that. And and with some of the younger guys coming up, um, it was like the group with uh, there's about uh, there's Cole Cole Bass was out there. Um, Vine Z was out for a few. Enoch um, Enoch was there. Musha he plays for Louis, Louis, Louis City. City. Yeah. yeah. Um, these guys like to dribble. Ollie was out, <laughs> so they're like always going one v one like. You know, I'm a little bit older, like veteran, so I <laughs> just move the ball. I usually like to move. Yeah, I'm just kind of out there, you know, get a little fitness, run around, right. but not necessarily like taking guys on all the time. And so I was like, man, these guys are going at it. <laughs> now, you might be wondering why Visit Aurora has a member of the Colorado Rapids on. They play at Dick Sporting Goods Park, which is a part of Denver, but they're a partner of Visit Aurora. So uh, we always encourage folks to catch a match at uh, Dick Sporting Goods Park. You often hear athletes say things like, you know, I was born with a ball in my crib. Colin, what's your what's your first memory with the soccer ball? Was it was it something that you were born with, or was it something that you learned and developed a passion for? Um, those memories around that age were all about my brother. He was six years older than me, or okay. he is six years older than me. So, yeah, I was going to his games, watching him play when when we were young, and um, it just kind of grew from there. At what point did you realize you were better than your brother? <laughs> <laughs> wow, uh, not for a while. He really, was, he was pretty competitive. Like he never like to let me think I was better than him at anything. So it, it, it might have been till he moved out of the house, you know, until he went off to college. Is there, um, is there a player that you looked up to when you were growing up, Colin? Professional athlete? Um, yeah, who was the poster on your wall? I had uh, basically the the golden generation of uh, Manchester United. Mm-hmm. So Scolzi, uh, Beckham, Keane. Um, those guys, and I remember I had a poster of that, and I had uh, Brazil, the Brazil kind of Jogo Benito, maybe a little bit before them, like Roberto Carlos, Ronaldo, Phenomeno. Uh, and uh, I like how you said Paul Scholes, the first name, was because I think Paul Scholes is very underrated, and he's a baller. I have top, to admit, I'm a baller. noob, so you guys yeah. are teaching me. Like you yeah. said, Ronaldo, I know Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Messi, Ronaldo. Uh-huh. Uh, you're a product of Denver East High School. I'm a George Washington Patriot, but I won't hold that against you. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, but you're, you've kind of come full circle. You're back with the Rapids organization. Um, does it feel like your career has, has come full circle being back home playing in front of your hometown team? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the Rapids have always been a part of uh, the soccer community in Denver. And so growing up, I definitely knew about them. Um, in college, I played for a loosely affiliated uh, PDL team called the Boulder Rapids. And um, so they were always they were always like a part of my uh, upbringing, and the people that I worked with, uh, Paul Bravo, and some of these guys worked for the Rapids at one point in their career. So now coming back, it definitely has been a kind of full circle type story, you'd say, because um, definitely towards the end of my career, and um, I've been a lot of places, and I never had the opportunity to play here. So it's it's been a really uh, rewarding and. And I've been so so grateful to have this opportunity. And the Rapids kind of have a reputation for pulling from local talent 
and also the broader global pool, um, they they really kind of get their 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 hands into the local scene. I imagine to to kind of develop that talent and and, and find that talent. Yeah, I mean, if you look across the the greater Denver metro area and then into Colorado Springs and Fort Collins, there's a lot of talent. And I think with the uh, evolution of the academy system, that's like the uh, the younger guys training under the Rapids umbrella. It used to be like a bunch of different clubs. And then you would kind of filter your way. The best players would filter their way to the top. And I think now they're able to identify players at a younger age and, and bring them along underneath the Rapids banner. And, and they have some um, great coaches there. The, the coaches with that, um, with that name and the funding and being able to provide um, you know, players a, a place to play that's, um, that's free. Um, the top players, um, they're, they're able to come and get some of the best coaching in, in the state. One of Eric Boucher's uh, worked with me when I was going to the Rush, um, one of the best coaches in the state, and he ended up getting uh, uh, coming over to the Rapids um, in, his, in his kind of career arc. And uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's really, um, he's an influence in this, in this area. He worked with me, he worked with uh, Lindsey Horan and, and Paolo Del Piccolo. And, um, a lot of top players that have come through in that generation. We're the destination marketing organization for the city of Aurora, so I'd be remiss not to mention your parents and their dedication to the students of Aurora. Um, would you like to brag on mom and dad and talk about their connection to Aurora a little bit? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, damn, you guys, you did your uh, your research there. I used the Google machine. All right, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, after um, they had their respective careers and once they were kind of semi-retired, they became teachers at Aurora Middle School and um, I think that was really cool of them, like the way they wanted to spend their time giving back. And, you know, I mean, it was a job, but it's for all the teachers, it's, a, it's not an easy job to do. And they deserve a huge credit for, for doing that. In 2002, you go to the Liverpool Youth Academy. You're playing with English Premier League players. At that time in your development, how important was that experience? And, and did it give you that confidence to know that you could play at that elevated pro level? Uh, no. It didn't. <laughs> it gave experiences. Um, it was quite revealing when you go over there. Like yeah. We were getting smacked by some teams. We played, <laughs> we played Wrexham. We played Liverpool's Youth Academy. And we played Everton. And it was all around the time when that crop of players was um, – finding out whether they would, you know, be the ones selected. They usually select them around like 16, 17. So they were all by far and away like <laughs> better. And it was it was more of like um, a learning experience to realize how much further I, I had to go to, to reach a professional level and and to um, like get to that level. I had to, to learn so much more and develop. So for some players, that's probably really motivating. But for others, it's it could be a fork in the road to say maybe this isn't for me. So it's it's kind of you know a trial by fire a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. It's kind of how you take it. Um, the trip was amazing. Like we went to uh, Liverpool Tottenham English Premier League game, and that was unbelievable. We went. To, we got to see uh, Newcastle play Juventus, which was <laughs> incredible. Uh, that was a Champions League game uh, up in up in Newcastle. So yeah, from those. From those, like it, it generates that like passion and those the love for the game because the fans over there are crazy. And once you experience that in real life, you kind of see what the entirety of football is about and how it can be. It's almost like uh, how it brings the community together. Really, it's it's a uh, it's really interesting over there. You know, you I remember walking to the Liverpool game. There was like young 13 12 year old kids firing fireworks off into the crowd and you know it was you know from that age all the way up to you know 60 70 year olds going to the game and they're all very much excited to go was there a stigma you had to fight being an american player or do those things not matter once you hit the pitch yeah i mean it's it's changed a lot i feel like um it was like so i went there and a more a more realistic trial opportunity I had was in Italy with Atalanta. Mm -hmm. um, that was when I realized it was a. I mean, it's hard going anywhere as a player, uh, foreign player. You know, breaking into a team. You know, it's when you don't speak the language and all that stuff. It's 
there's definitely a little bit of um, judgment, I guess you'd say. And and at that time, it, there weren't too many players playing overseas. So I think it's changed a lot now. You know, you see a lot of guys going over at that young age, and and they've done well in their careers to um, kind of reestablish the American. Uh, I guess the American perception, the American yeah. reputation there. Oftentimes, if you're watching ESPN or you know the pundits, you see you see transactions and you don't understand kind of the emotional implications that go behind it. So I want to take this opportunity to ask you what the psychology is of a player. Specifically, uh, in 2011, you were left exposed during the expansion draft uh, by Real Salt Lake, and you ended up uh, going to Montreal. When those moments happen, what's the emotional state that you're in is it is it a feeling of like excitement and opportunity that you're about to be a part of a brand new franchise is there a feeling of like oh man i was building something here in salt lake like what, take us through kind of the psychology of those moments oh yeah that's uh that's a great question i you know that's that happened quite young uh when when i was quite young in my career and it was tough for sure i mean coming into salt lake they were um before I got there, they won the MLS Cup. When we were, when I was with them, we went to the CONCACAF Champions League final. So there was an established culture there, a great team. So it's always difficult leaving under those circumstances. And, and psych, psychological, psych, psychologically wise, like it definitely hits you because um, you're going into an unknown. And I, and I didn't really know all of the challenges that you face as an expansion club. It's, it's uh, really, more than meets the eye for sure you know you're, you're thinking, building a culture from scratch i imagine that's part of it yeah you're building a culture you're building a, a club um there's a lot of good things that go along with that as well because uh everything's new and exciting for the community which is which is amazing and you get a lot of tension and all that so it it, it was like everything wrapped in one you know you're leaving some some friends behind i remember it was me and my my roommate chris schuler and it was basically the decision was between us two kind of you know with respect to the roster um because they had a lot of veteran guys that they had to protect that would get taken for sure yeah and um yeah it was tough you know we we're just like splitting up the splitting up the household there <laughs> um and it took a it took a lot it was those times in montreal were definitely formative in my career and you know it, it was a challenge I got to meet some great people there and and that i think you know when you look at all the things that come with it there's always a, a bright side to, to being moved um but there's also just the transition uh moving to a different country uh the language barriers was pretty they they definitely like to speak french mm -hmm. and even though they spoke english they were very like we're speaking french right um so yeah, it, it definitely faced some challenges, especially because, you know, I was maybe a bit immature and and not as uh, able to adapt as quickly as you, as you get older. I think it's more business wise. The, the the transactions when that happens is is you're you're kind of used to it or you know what to expect in different markets, different clubs. But yeah, it was that was an interesting part of my career for sure. You mentioned that it's a, a business, but it's also sport. It's your passion. 2014, a few years later, you get traded to Toronto. Uh, I think it's hard for non-athletes to grasp the feelings that go along with that. What was that experience like? Is it exciting? Is it devastating? Um, do you miss teammates and coaches? Yeah, so that one was different because it was midway through the season. Mm -hmm. um, like the one prior, it was it was uh, in the off season, and I didn't have the foresight to know that I was going. So like I'm like talking to the kid guy, like trying to get. Cause I had a really nice collection of boots at the time. And I was like, you gotta make sure these boots <laughs> get in the there so you can send them over. And like, you know, like you don't know what's going on with your stuff. It's just over there, you know? Yeah. So like, but when I, when I went from Montreal to um, Toronto, it was, it was really almost the opposite. Like for leaving, um, you know, it was a club where we had done some things, but then we were in transition again. Uh, we qualified for the year, uh, for the playoffs the year before, but, then there was um, some movement with the DPs and it was a, a new team kind of changing over and, and Toronto was kind of building up again. And so um, it was a really exciting move. I remember um, when I got the word, 
uh, we were getting ready for training and um, I walked out, the GM came and grabbed me and I walked out of the training, the locker room. And then he told me, yeah, we're trading you to Toronto, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, okay, it's like, I'm gonna go get my stuff. I walked back in the locker room and all the boys in the locker room were like applauding. They were like really happy for me to be moving to, at that time was kind of, it, although they're competitors, at that time Toronto was spending um, a little bit more money and yeah. kind of um, was a more established franchise in, in that moment. So it was kind of like um, going, a, yeah, going a, a step up. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, that, it's, it's crazy, you know, it kind of depends on all the things. It's really a matter of um, taking in everything that's going on, you know, to where it kind of d depends on like that kind of impacts how you're kind of looking at the, the move. When you join a team mid-season and you're trying to integrate into their dynamic, is it the coaches who kind of determine your role or do you have to kind of assert dominance? Or like, how do you fit into the culture of a locker room that's already kind of established? Yeah, that's, uh, the coaches do play a role in that for sure. Um, and that was definitely an, an interesting locker room to go into. Um, we, they had uh, Ryan Nelson as a coach a few big names in there. Michael Bradley was in there, uh, Jermaine Defoe. Um, so they had something going. Uh, we missed the playoffs the last game on the last game of the season, regular season that year. Um, but there was, uh, there was like a little bit of kind of friction at the beginning, you know, the, 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 the coaches saw me as um, like the, the pivot, the main six in there, and they were trying to play Michael Bradley a little bit higher. And I think he wanted to play a little bit in the six. And so I remember for the first couple months, there was a lot of like, we'd go in to do some video and you would kind of feel the tension, you know, like in the room because the coach is wanting one thing. You know, Michael's trying to, he's very um, persistent on what he wants and how he wants the, the team to function. So he was, you know, thinking another thing, and and so it was. Uh, it was and definitely you're interesting. You're kind of in the middle. Yeah, you're just trying to thrive in your own career. Yeah. yeah, for sure. You know, you're just trying to figure out how you're going to contribute to the team, and I'm pretty flexible in the way I like to play. So we were just trying to work that out, and and it and it got resolved later on. Um, a new coach, a new um, kind of style of play came in, and and that was that. But. Um, that was definitely some interesting times you know it's 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 always about picking up as much as you can and, and just trying to um, perform at your highest no matter what uh, after stops in minnesota and houston you go and play in denmark what was that experience like um that was that was a really incredible um experience for me for sure i i was uh persistent on going over there at that time um i could have gone over um two years before, before I went to Minnesota and I turned it down. Um, and I kind of not necessarily regretted that decision, but I always had it in the back of my mind that I would, that I would go over there some, at some point. And I, um, I just remember having to wait a long time to figure out like how it was all going to work out. And I had a, a really good agent at the time, um, Sean Higgins, he was kind of building his initial, um, uh, I guess footprint in the in the Danish area so and he was having he had a connection with a guy named I forget his first name his uh, last name is Jensen he's a, a top Denmark player but he was working as an agent at the time um, and so I got, I got over there and I had to trial for a couple teams and I ended up um, getting on the team at Helsinger which was really cool it turned out I had no idea what the circumstances were and what the club was really about but when i got there there was an american owner trying to buy the club um and uh he was in the process of doing that and so i was uh getting signed and then he bought the club a little bit uh after and that was uh, the beginning of um you know i wasn't there a long time but it was kind of like the beginnings of what they're working on now which is really cool it's uh He's he's kind of um, he's kind of taking um, it's kind of in vogue I guess you you try and maximize young players and build up your roster and and 
they're in the second division there, which is called the first division, but the the top ones. I think the, they just uh, played their way back into the first division, right? They were close. Okay. They were close. They seemingly got or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were close, man. They they uh, unfortunately they tanked at the end. Uh-huh. They um, they were killing the the league the whole way and then it goes to a it, it switches into a promotion relegation okay. battle they take the top six teams and the, bo- the bottom six and yeah. they kind of do the the last half of the season like that and so they they went on a bad run and and they just missed out of, of the top two at towards the end of the year how would you describe their play style more possession attack based defensive um it was interesting <laughs> yeah it was not as i expected um it was a bit more uh a bit more longer balls okay. used in it yeah. there's some incredibly talented technical players um but they didn't necessarily play through the thirds like consistently yeah um i think it was it was not what i was expecting yeah. you know the 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 one thing I did realize is that in possession they were very, very good, and they the way they kind of saw the game was a little bit different as far as like the angles of passing and 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 how you show up for the ball and mm-hmm. stuff like that, and the training was different as well. Um, but they uh, they did use longer balls, which I which I wasn't expecting, kind of more to their advantage. Yeah. Um, how does that affect your approach when they're playing in a style that maybe you're not prepared for or accustomed to? How does that affect uh, your approach? Yeah, it, it's. I mean, obviously, there's things you can learn, and then like, I realized that I was uh, a little bit more physical than some of the players, so that definitely kind of changed the way I played. Um, you know, more more running with the ball, more. Um, it ended up being more attacking with for me, um, and 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 in the games that you kind of learn how how to. Uh, adapt to those kind of longer balls and how you have to be defensively when people are attacking you that way and then kind of how to you know you're not necessarily looking to receive off the center backs you're kind of going either running in the channel or looking for second balls and stuff like that is it surreal to be in a video game yes yeah (laughs) i mean because i mean you could create a player and we've been able to do that as regular (laughs) schlubs but i mean when you see yourself in fifa in fifa (laughs) first off our, our Soccer players, like the NFL players, they complain about ratings. Do you feel underestimated, disrespected? Yeah. Are there things that you disagree with? How do you feel with? about what? your player card? Yeah, what's, that like? <laughs> what's the player do you, card? Or do you even do you even play or, and care? I, I like video games, so I play quite a bit. And nice. yeah, I, we definitely like kind of give each other, you know, like just some banter over, yeah. you know, if they're slow, <laughs> if they're like really, really slow in the game, you know, you're like, that's pretty accurate or something. Um, but. You know, I look at mine, I'm like, well, geez, like I haven't changed. My, my rating hasn't changed. It, I feel like it's just like 67 or something like that. It's been like that forever. But um, it's uh, lately it's been really cool because like the technology is like so wild. Like yeah. you look like really like yourself in the video game, which is like, you know, you're like looking at your beard and you're <laughs> like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like, you know, it's just it's just crazy to think about, like how even for a player like myself, you know, I don't you know, I'm not like a star by any means. And they like get it pretty spot on. I remember Kevin Durant saying, you know, with 2K, it's you, you can't play as yourself. Do you are you playing as the Rapids? Are you playing as yourself? Oh, yeah. When I play, I, I definitely I got to hype myself up. You know, <laughs> okay. like I, I'll be out there like put myself at like attacking mid and i'm just trying to bang goals you know yeah david if i was in fifa too i'd be using myself (laughs) yeah i I would be too um happy early birthday this week is your birthday yeah thank you Um, thank you very much 34 is on the horizon uh, which is by no means old but i imagine you've adjusted how you train and how you approach and treat your body how is it different from your you know your times playing college ball in portland to now oh yeah it's completely different i mean off the field there's a lot of upkeep maintenance and that type of stuff that i have to do uh just to say keep my body in work in order you know it's like every year i feel like in the league the guys get younger and faster and you know the league has put in a lot of money for you know bringing over these guys from argentina and brazil and i mean just this uh last game we're in and playing against new york city Mm -hmm. 
and they had uh, God, this uh, Mag- Magno guy. For, he's a winger who's very good. Um, I think they bought him for like eleven or fourteen million, something <laughs> in the range there. And and he's only like nineteen twenty, and he was he was quality. Um, there's just a lot of young, very dynamic players coming into the league, and so to keep up with that, I definitely. You know, in my off days, um, I'm not just kind of sitting on the couch anymore. Um, I, I got to get up and go to the gym and, and do something to to keep my body ticking over. Um, but it's uh, it's all really a learning, like you get to learn a lot. You get to learn about your body. Um, you get to learn a lot about physical just preservation and, and different ways the body can kind of cope. You know, I, I, I like that you said 34 is by no means old. Cause I feel that way. I, I still feel good. And it's just a matter of, of keeping certain things in working order and, and also, you know, balance. As a vet, do you, do you take a leadership role on the team or is it so competitive that it's a kind of fin for yourself league? Um, no, there's, I mean, there's always room for leadership in, in the locker room. Um, I think what was great about our team last year is that our team was really competitive. Like the guys were really hungry and, and they wanted to prove something every every game. Yeah. Um, this year, it's a little bit different. We're kind of transforming, in my eyes, into a, a different, um, a little bit older, more mature team. So the the kind of mentorship that you provide is not really um, for the young guys. It's just kind of that chemistry and connectivity between you and your teammates and trying to hold people accountable every day, compete every day and and really, you know, keep everybody on their toes. Someday down the line, you will eventually hang up your cleats, but I imagine you'd still want to have your feet in the game, so to speak. What, what do you see after your playing career, coaching, uh, being an analyst, front office what, what, would, what would be like the dream next step you know I, I've been kind of dipping my toes in, in different things here and there I, I find um, most often you know, that's kind of like being an agent with something that uh, comes around a little bit you know just having the um, the network that I have playing for so long you know you know kind of a lot of the people in different different clubs different regions of the of the of the country and and that kind of comes natural you know I'm a pretty friendly guy so I like to you know keep my relationships and friends close and so when people need something I'm usually able to help Um, you know I think I'll always be playing a little bit you know Malik and I will be out there on the on the pitch you know even if it's some pickup (laughs) yeah so um you know i don't know exactly um what what it would be i i I did um i had a little span where um in 2019 where i didn't have a club and i was kind of exploring that to see what what i would do and and one thing that also popped up was you know now that they have the academies um pretty well built out they're kind of looking at like a player coach position to help players make the transition from academy to the first team and there's an increased um, demand on those players coming in they're expected to perform you know so there's a lot that comes with that and and some clubs have been looking at building that out you know holistically you know when you become a pro there's a lot to learn off the field as well there's a lot to learn you know about your your lifestyle your finances um, just your kind of overall maturity and and life knowledge you know it's it's when you're dealing with some of the the kids that come up that are 17 18 you know you just there's a lot to, for them to learn yeah. in terms of the level of play with Denmark in here how would it differentiate um i would say it's it was kind of it re- resembled like talent wise overall it was probably about USL okay. when in the league i was in um, but less relying on the physical attributes and more technique, yeah. um, which I think is um, it's it's uh, it, that's that kind of is what changes like the style of game games and stuff like that. But it was it was really nice for me because I'd never played a different in a in a in a league that had a completely different style where you know the they're not just kind of looking for the most athletic guys. So that was that was really cool. That is cool. 
Um, I saved my dumbest question for last. <laughs> All right, what you got? Because I didn't want you to roll your eyes immediately upon meeting me. <laughs> okay. I'm embarrassed to ask. Do you like Ted Lasso? <laughs> I feel like the show has uh, done a lot for the sport. Obviously, the show's not really about soccer, but yeah. you learn about team dynamics. There is something that kind of connects you to the spirit of competition. Do you care about the show? Uh, Do you like personally, it? no, I don't. I don't care about the show. I don't have Apple TV, so <laughs> I didn't like watch it. Everywhere was telling me to watch okay. it, and I, and I was like, man, I. I don't know if I can add another sub subscription service, you know? Like, <laughs> I already got so many. But, do the um, free trial and then watch like two or three episodes and you'll decide whether or not you <laughs> love it or hate it. <laughs> but I do think, I do think like, it's really interesting how that, that TV show, like when you saw like Jesse Marsh, I don't know if you know him, but he was, he was my coach in Montreal. And then right. he's done so much, you know, that was his first job. And then he's gone on and done, done so many things. and now has ended up, ended up as the Leeds manager and saved them from uh, relegation this past season. And, you know, the first thing they ask him when he when he gets signed over there is like similar question, you know, about Ted Lasso. And, you know, that goes back to like what you're saying about perception of Americans and and uh, kind of it's a little bit like tongue in cheek, like we kind of, you know, in, a, in the footballing world, they kind of look at us like idiots <laughs> but it's like you know there's there's been so much i think jesse marsh is an incredible story when you look at like how much the american game has developed and the individual personalities that are coming along that who are american i mean you, you see um uh god I'm, I'm gonna forget his name but he's, he was the red bulls coach and he was on the um he was assistant coach at manchester united this last year um, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, and, and I forgot his name as well. And he and you know like back in the day you would never even see that you know right. at, at at such a big club and you know these people um, who are expanding their horizons and you can go there's a long list of players who have done the same you know in those top top environments to kind of push the American. Um, brand forward in the footballing world is incredible and then if you look in the future then you see that we have the world cup coming up mm -hmm. yep. and that's going to be in a lot of american american uh, uh cities and for some reason kansas city but not here yeah we won't get into that for some reason. <laughs> we won't get into that but <laughs> no matter where it, where it is it's great because it just brings that right to your to your back door basically i mean it's no problem for somebody from Denver to just drive out to Kansas City and catch some games you know so <laughs> it's uh it's really it's just it's just an interesting point in the in the kind of dynamic of where American soccer is at we wish you all the success and all the health as you progress in this season by the way how's how's the season going how are you feeling about the season um I'm feeling good the season's been up and down yeah. you know we've we had the the Champions League at the beginning and you know that's always a difficult um, way to start the season just with the the high level of games like early on usually you kind of build into it so you know a lot of guys have played a lot of minutes I think we had a little break that kind of allowed us to uh, regroup and rest and and I think this team is is really focused on you know going out and fighting every day and and more you know Gonna, playing to be there in the, at the end you know we want we we did a lot in the regular season last year and that was amazing and now we want to you know do that as well but then also realize what it takes at the end of the year to to kind of achieve more so that's what we've been working on that's colin warner midfielder for your colorado rapids I want to thank you so much for taking the time today appreciate you colin yeah no problem make sure you follow him on ig at young boulder thanks for the shout hey thank you for listening to the gateway to the rockies podcast visit aurora is the official destination marketing organization for the city of aurora colorado and acts as the primary liaison between meeting planners and hotel partners as Aurora's Convention and Visitors Bureau, Visit Aurora's mission is grounded in showcasing Aurora as a premier destination for meetings, business, and leisure travel. Visit Aurora represents more than 75 plus hotel properties with 13,500 plus guest rooms and more than 1 million square feet of meeting space, including Colorado's largest resort, Gaylord Rockies Resort and Convention Center. As Colorado's third largest city, Aurora is located minutes away from Denver International Airport and showcases mountain views, memorable meeting 
spaces and 250 plus international eateries that offer a unique experience for each and every visitor. As the gateway to the Rockies, Visit Aurora's role in the local community goes beyond marketing the city as a destination. The Visit Aurora team is here to assist you with your Colorado visit from facilitating your meeting, event, or convention to helping you discover local flavor and attractions. Go beyond the boardroom in Aurora, Colorado. For more, visit us at visitaurora.com.